I'm Bill Glahn with the Center of the American Experiment. My colleagues and I have been traveling the state, telling Minnesotans about the unprecedented leftward shift in state government after the last election that's been hailed as a progressive model for the rest of America. My thesis is that the state Democrats sold Minnesota politics to the highest bidder. I call this Minnesota for sale. Last year's elections in Minnesota were close. Democrats swept Minnesota's statewide offices and took control of the state legislature for the first time in a decade. But all of this was done with the narrowest of margins. For example, the Democratic state auditor won re-election by 10,000 votes with over two and a half million votes counted in the election. The state attorney general won by a margin of 20,000 votes and Democrats took control of the state Senate by a margin of 34 to 33, one seat where that one seat was decided by a mere 321 votes in the district around Red Wing and Hastings. In this video, we're going to follow the money showing how state Democrats sold Minnesota politics to the highest bidder. I estimate that Minnesota Democrats and their allies spent $97 million in taking over state government last year and now command a state budget of $36 billion a year. That return on investment gets something like $370 back for every $1 invested. You can't find that kind of rate of return in Wall Street or Silicon Valley. And depending on how you measure it, out-of-state money represents anywhere from one-third to one-half of the total Democrats raised over the last two years. So Minnesota was sold, but who are the buyers? You won't be surprised to find out that public employee unions, who have the most to gain, were among the biggest contributors to Minnesota Democrats. National and state public employee and teachers unions collectively donated more than $12 million to Minnesota Democrats over the past two-year cycle. If you follow Minnesota politics, you won't be surprised to find out that the biggest single contributor to Minnesota Democrats was Elida Messenger. She gave more than $3 million to Minnesota Democrats over the past two years. Messenger is an heiress to the Rockefeller oil fortune and is the former wife of the former Minnesota governor, Mark Dayton. But the names of the other major individual contributors might surprise you. J.B. Pritzker is the sitting governor of Illinois and an heir to the Hyatt Hotel fortune. He gave $2.6 million to Minnesota Democrats over the past two years. Hollywood royalty is well represented. Oscar-winning director Steven Spielberg and his actress wife Kate Capshaw gave more than $400,000 to Minnesota Democrats. Pritzker and Spielberg weren't the only members of the prestigious Forbes 400 billionaires list to donate to Minnesota Democrats. Some of the fortunes behind the biggest corporate names in America gave to Minnesota Democrats. In fact, 23 households representing 12 different states off the Forbes 400 list gave to Minnesota Democrats during the past election cycle. You may already know that New York financier George Soros and his family give to Minnesota Democrats, either individually in their own names or through the Soros Open Society Foundation and other vehicles. Earlier this year, Soros named his youngest son, Alex Soros, as the heir to the family political operation. Here's a picture from Alex Soros's Twitter page showing him with his dear friend, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. Those new to Minnesota politics might believe that the most important address is the state capitol building, that beautiful building designed by the famous architect Cass Gilbert. No, the most important address in Minnesota politics is further up University Avenue, where it intersects with Snelling. This ugly green office building is the headquarters for Alliance for a Better Minnesota. The political nonprofit ABM controls a whole network of 501c3 and 501c4 nonprofit corporations, political action committees, and other vehicles all with the same mission, to elect Minnesota Democrats. Collectively, the ABM network took in and spent more money than the state Democratic Party did in the past year. Speaking of the state DFL party, Ken Martin, the chair of the party, was formerly the head of Win Minnesota and the 2022 Fund, which are the main fundraising vehicles 
for the Alliance for a Better Minnesota Network. Now in his current role, he coordinates closely with ABM and their other allies to make sure all bases are covered and there is no duplication of effort. All of this is done well within the letter of the law. To recap, California and New York-based billionaires, shadowy Washington, D.C. political action committees, unions, and others contributed the $100 million that Democrats used to take over state politics last year. Despite a money advantage of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 over Minnesota Republicans, state Democrats barely took control of state government last year. Recall that one Senate seat where they won by 321 votes. It was close. Shortly after the legislative session ended, Governor Tim Walz went on a nationwide victory tour with a stop at the White House. He did national media appearances and received glowing write-ups in the Washington Post and the New York Times for his work. But with an election next year, Minnesota Democrats have to do it all over again, raising the money to defend their narrow margin in the State House of Representatives. Our exclusive polling shows that the Democrats' policy agenda is deeply unpopular with state voters. Democrats will need every dollar they can raise on Wall Street and in Hollywood to do it again in 2024. Thanks for watching.